Hey there, welcome back and thanks for joining me. All my supplies and equipment are down in the description box in my Amazon storefront. And the reason I've been doing that lately, um, if, if I click on a product that uh, I'm telling you about and they don't restore that product or keep it going, you just have a blank page. So I've been putting things in the Amazon store. Hopefully that will keep up to speed and they won't run out. So anyway, uh, yeah, and if you like this stuff, you can subscribe. You know the drill, notification bell, questions, all that good stuff, and thank you. So let's get going. So hey, we're going to do this. So this is a really good painting little project for thinner uh, watercolor paper. I like to do my cards out of a little bit thinner and not real thick, but um, it'll do great on thick. But you know how when you take uh, a lot of water on thinner and it just kind of buckles on you a little bit and it doesn't quite go all the way down when it dries? that's what I typically use because I don't typically wet down an area. Now, if I'm going to wet down an area, I'm going to use something like this. And it's going to be a little bit thicker. Still makes great cards. Both of them work well. Um, that's just my preference, and I thought I'd tell you about it. So, the biggest thing that gets watered here is this right here. It's not big. It's painting. It's not like a wet-on-wet -wet type technique. So, there's that. And let's get rolling. Now... Let me tell you a little bit what I'm using here. Um, the Grumbacher, I've got that. It's a 9 by 12 inch. Let me show you what I did. You tear this out, tear off that little perforated thing, whatever that is, and you've ended up with two pieces like this once you cut it in half. It's perfect for a typical 4 by 6 card. You're looking at 4.5 by 6. So then, let me show you. It's been a while since I've showed y'all this. So here is um, what I make my creases in. Can you kind of see this? So that's what I do on that. So I've already got mine marked. And it's an A6, which is the size of the envelope and card that I'm doing. It comes with this little thing, fits right there. I take that and it rides down those grooves and completely gives you a crease for your card. So when you fold it, it's nice and neat, and it's not tearing your paper, and it folds pretty. It makes a great card. So, that's what I do on that. Also, my brushes that I'm going to be using are, I'm not using all these, but I just want to show them to you. I absolutely love my silver. I, I The black velvet from silver, they are so well balanced. I mean, they really feel good. I never thought when I heard that, I was like, that's nuts. But no, it, there is something to it. Um, for this one, I will be using, let's do four. I've got a six, eight, and two. I use the two a lot for little things, but the four is kind of my go-to. Well, it's running away from me. And then, I, of course, use a liner. For the grass. So those are the two I'm going to be using. Um, regular pencil only because I want you to see what I'm doing. Um, normally I use the ones that are um, lighter uh, lead. Great for watercolor, but if I use that and kind of sketch out like I normally do, you can't see it as well. And this is my Butcher Block Tray. It's from American Journey Butcher Tray. Um, I love these. I love to work on them. Um, mix your colors. And typically what I do is I mix the color in a darker and then I add a little bit of water and a little bit more water. So I've got my colors kind of in three sections. Each one, next one being watered down more than the other one. And last, I've had a request about using the watercolor inks. Now, I know these are just watercolors, but they've got a little bit of different texture to it. And I think, do we want to do a red one? Sure, let's do red. Um, so these are the Darton, Dr. P.H. Martins. And yeah, they're really cool. Um, it's red. 
This is uh, alizarin crimson. Mm, I kind of like that one. Okay, let's do that one instead. I'm going to need some green. So here's a sap green. That's a good one. Um... Yeah, it's kind of a so yeah these are the sizes too they come in so you can buy sets with the big ones if you want to and these are one fluid ounce or you can get the little ones if you want to play around see how you like them get you a set of the little ones really cool and that's a half ounce so there you go those are the two right there and I need a brown Mm, burnt sienna, uh, do I need a black, no, and then for the white I will use uh, acrylic, I have no idea where it's at, there we go, just plain old acrylic paint, nothing special, all right, so, I guess that's all the browns. There's a burnt umber. Which one do I like the best? I like the one that's not as yellowy. You know what? Let's go with burnt umber for a minute. And if I don't like it, we'll change. Okay. So that's kind of the three colors you've got here. Brown, green, red. Yep, there we go. Okay. Now. Let me tell you a little trick here. So I have um, if you don't want to draw this freehanded each time, get you a picture, put your card above it, and put it up to a window. Like if this is your window, put it up here while it's daylight and you can see perfectly to trace around it. I do that trick all the time. When I do my butterflies or dragonflies, I do not want to sit here and do this draw me every time because they don't come out the same. So, what I'm doing here, this way, these are really easy. I'm going to draw here and loop around and come back to this one. So, that's how all these are done. like that. You can make them more exaggerated like I did. You can make them real subtle. Now start on this end and do this. See? Real easy. Now, where the stem goes, I just erase a little bit. And I do that. And I do that. See? Now I left a little pink. Normally I have a white eraser. Get the white erasers. So, here is the next one. And if you want to stop, put your stem and then continue. That's the way to do it, too. And then I'm going to make a little bit bigger one over here. Like that. There you go. That is it. Can you see? All the lines. All right, I'm going to close this up and set it. Let me see where you can see it. There we go. All right, I've got my water. Let me set right here. Now, huh, just to say it up front, when I do pictures like this, I rare, I don't. I just don't do one at a time because I put the red on, I'm rinsing, I put brown on, I'm rinsing, I put green on, I'm rinsing. I do about 20 of these at a time. Now, I may do different colors, but for the most part, I'm doing 20 of these. So, I'll get my red mixed up. I do think I'm going to put this over here. I do get my red mixed up, and I paint all my reds. And then I'll get my next one, paint all my reds. And I do that until all my reds are painted. I never rinse my brush. So I'm saving paint time by trying to 
reload. I just keep loading um, with what I've already got mixed up. Then when I go to the brown, I do the brown. Now, I don't do all the reds. If you can see, this has different reds to it. I do the lightest red, then the darkest, the darkest, and dark, you know, keep going like that. So I do all the lightest red, get all them done. Then I do the next darkest red on all of them. So I'm not swapping back and forth. And so what I do generally, all the lights, and then I do the second row of all the colors. So I know that's confusing. You can figure out what you want to do. You can do all the reds and get all the mushroom tops done or completely do all the lightest of everything and swap your colors that way. But by the time you get done with the 20th one, you've gone to back to the first one. It's dry. Okay. All right, I'm going to take, I'm going to get me some water again over here. I'm going to get lighter. Nope, I do not like that color. So, Okay, I didn't like that. It was pink. I didn't want pink. I want red. And this is a red. I might. Add a little bit of black to this just to darken it up. Now that's the one thing with these. There's there's colors, but if you want it specific, you're going to have to add it. You're going to have to make it. I mean, seriously, that's it. Okay. Hmm. says black, but that's got some blue to it, and it may be just some undertones. That's fine. So, yeah, I'm going purple here. What do I want to do? We'll put a little brown. And this is where you have to play. You have to play on this. Hmm, I'm not liking that either. So, i tell you what. Let's go ditch the idea of wanting a burgundy-ish. And let's just go with red. So, we'll start back over. And this is part of it. What is this one? Deep red. Deep red rose. Rosie does. Nope. <laughs> nope. All right. So we're stuck with our red. We're doing this. Okay. Now I start from the left going to the right so I don't put my hand over on it. So I'm going to do this one. And if, by chance, that is not dark enough to add some more to it. Now, 
that doesn't take a lot of this paint because you're only doing one layer of this color. Okay, Get this one a little more. Now, this might be confusing at first. I'm not worried about this over here. That's getting covered. All right, normally I would go to the next one, but I'm gonna dry this real quick. To this, and we'll add some more paint and we'll get it a little darker. Now, I'm going to do about three fourths of it, so I'm just going to bring it over to about this area over here. And you don't have to make it smooth if you don't want. If you do want it smooth, then make it smooth. Some more, we're going to go a little bit darker. I'm actually kind of using it straight. This is a little bit of a learning curve compared to using your regular paints. I just had a request for these. My power strip's trying to escape. All right. already used kind of straight so I'm gonna throw in some of this that nope, that's the yellow brown umber yeah okay I'm gonna throw some of this in here just to kind of give me a little darker there there's the color I wanted in the first place okay so we went 
a fourth, a half, can't see it in this one good, but around half-ish, now we're doing about a third of it. Now, I'm going to add even more of this brown in here. I want it pretty dark. Let's see what a touch of black will do because I really not want it brownish. I like that okay so this one I'm gonna do just like this Now, I do a lot of things where I layer them in colors like this. It's a lot of fun, and you don't have to be great at the wet on wet where it flows into the next color. It's very blotchy, but it's a lot of fun. And then I will take straight black and do that very corner. Okay. Now, let's do browns. Now you can go in with really dark and blotch this in on one side and let it bleed over. I still, I'm going to stick with the layering of it. more to this, get a little darker. Oh goodness, just see what I just did. What in the world? Teach me to put that down, won't it? Okay. Get me some water on a paper towel. It's not working. So, there you go. Part of it. I'll think about how to cover that. We'll get that done. 
and it wasn't that I had paint on my brush, it's I drug it through that. So, all right, now we're gonna add a little bit more. And you don't have to do this big area. You can see right here, I'm just doing a little area and got plenty. Again, you're doing it in either quarter of what you've already painted or a third. Depends on how many layers you want on it. Now, I'm doing the grass last. That's the very last thing I do. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of this black, and I want to make a gray. And I'm going to stick it right up under here. Just a little bit. I mean, it's barely detectable, but it is there. All right, next layer, I'm just going to do straight, I'm not adding water to it. There. I think I want that a little darker, so I'm going to add some more. like it needs to show up some. Now when you're doing there, these, you'll do a lot slower. I'm just not wanting to take up a lot of your time showing and being peculiar. So you get the jazz, so slow down when you do it. All right. I think I want to come down on these a little bit. This needs to be a little longer. Yeah. Okay. Let me get these dry and we'll do the green. So the, the green I am using, sap green. My stoppers don't work. <laughs> there we go. This is when I swap to my liner brush. Ooh, sap green. Let's see. I need brown in this one. So I'm going to come up here and grab some of this brown. There we go. That's the green I like. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add this here. I like more of that sage. There we go. Good job. <laughs> I told myself good job. Good grief. <laughs> How many other of us painting? Oh, my word. Okay. <laughs> Again, the lightest color first. I don't mind this is only watered down. Now, very loosely, you want to back up. You hold it up here, you're going to get exact. You back up, you get a little more freer. Okay. 
Okay. Can I get that dry? Add a little bit more to it. Again, I mix up a big area. You don't have to do that. I just... I'm used to working in that big. Okay. Here's our next one. I'm getting a little darker. I want it a little more darker. Now, I learned the hard way. You don't have to screw these in each time, but yeah, I've learned where, yeah, you better, because you're going to get green all over everything. Everything. Kitchen counters. I have white ones. Yeah, everywhere. Didn't think I would forget and grab it. Oh, pretty. Okay, this is really dark. Good save you color. And look how dimensional just adding that really dark makes it. Now you're not seeing my boo boo so much. All right. So I want to go back over really dark with some black to make that very last dark. And I'm going to use it straight. There's just something about a dimension that that adds. I don't know. Okay, back to this. I'm going to use some of the black. Now, you can do these in pen. I like to do them with the paint because there's just an amount of uncontrolledness about it that it actually turns out pretty good. If I try to control it too much, now I'm not even hitting up here for some reason. Now, the only thing I will do with a pen, and I've got these Arteza Inconic, is this, because this has got a line. You can outline it, and sometimes I still do. Um, when I do outline, so I don't have to stay exactly on the edge of the color, is I very loosely do it. And I may, you know, back and forth, just to make it very, very loose. Because if you try to do it perfect, okay, back that up. If I try to do it perfect, it looks very forced, very stiff. I just, I don't. So, um, I've learned that that's just kind of my style, what I'm thinking. Like this, you know, you kind of do a sketchy move with it. Because I'm not going to stay in the lines. So, this, this makes it okay because it looks like, you meant to do it so it's accepted that way isn't that funny how that works
and it gives it a little more playful and I will do these just so we can look at them either go through them and then go back over them yeah it didn't work out for me but I do this so it's not too serious okay so it gives it a little playfulness I mean, after all, these are red, and they're not real life at all. Okay, one of my favorite parts, and we'll get my six for this one. I want to get over here, and I want to get some of this color, water it down really good. And we're just going to do a few splatters. Bigger brushes do better sometimes. It just kind of depends. I don't want the dots to take over if i did i would have got like a brush like this that really lays down big dots and it's fine but you know it just kind of depends now see i'm getting all this you don't even see it anymore there they're there but they don't demand a lot of attention which one was i using Well, I'm not using it anymore, though. Um, okay, now I am looking for a different one. Now, I'm not putting my acrylic on this. It will dry and stick. So, I'm just going to use some of my napkin. What's great about this watercolor on this butcher tray is I can come back and reactivate any of this. Now, let me show you what I use most of the time. Okay, this is what I use majority of the time. Now, excuse that. I've splattered and it's all got in that. But I will mix up this color, a lot of it. Have it in there. Um, I don't have a lot of paint to it if I'm going to do my light color. I keep adding more paint, more water, and now all I have to do is dip in and I've got the right color and I do my 20 cards. So I do all these separate. Now, if I want to clean all this, I just rinse it. It's done. But I can put my blue back in there or some kind of red or some kind of purple. You don't have to match these colors exactly because it's going to blend in with them. So that's my go-to. That's my favorite. Now, I've picked a brush with a kind of flat end. We'll stick it in my acrylic, and I'm just going to put down. Now, you don't want to take this all the way to the bottom because it does leave a little bit of a hole. You want to just dip it in a little bit and see how it doesn't have the hole in the end. And I make a lot of playful cards. Hopefully they will kind of diffuse a serious <laughs> problem. There's a lot of serious out there today. All right, there is that. And well, we are done. I'm, that bugs me. Does that bug y'all? It bugs me. Let me fix that. So, I want it dark. There we go. It just seemed like it needed that. All right. Just a little bit. It's funny the things that bug you. Okay. There you go. There is a mushroom card. It's a lot of fun to do and it's pretty easy I mean you don't have to blend well you don't have to you know be exact I just start with my lightest color and work to my dark now if you want to go the other way go the other way it's just as the how I work so there you go 
Look, see they're not too different. So, I hope that gave you some good ideas, and y'all go have fun.